Hey there, my name is Gina and welcome to Hippie Happy Homeschooler. Today I'm hopping on here because I want to share with you the subjects that we are doing together as a family in morning time. Some people call it morning time, some people call it morning basket, some people call it enrichment activities um, or group subjects or family subjects. We just call it morning time in our house. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through kind of a run through of how the flow works in our family, as well as showing you some of the books that we use. Also, I'm gonna show you how I keep track of everything, like where I house all of our books and the different things that we're using for morning time, and then how I kind of flesh out the schedule. So this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video, but I hope that it will help um, with your own personal homeschool planning or maybe spark some ideas or encourage you or um, help in some way. That's the whole reason I come on here and um, share what we're doing is because I have been so blessed by other homeschoolers that go online and share what they're doing, what has worked, what hasn't worked, what has been a blessing to them, what has been useful. And so I just want to pass that on. So starting off at the beginning of our day, we use World Watch News as our current events, um, our news source for the day. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Um, we've been using World Watch for the past two years. And what it is, is it's about a 10 minute newscast of all of the current events that are happening all over the world. Um, it is a Christian organization that puts it on, but they don't have a political slant. And that is why I, appreciate them because it's a way for my children to get current events without being told how to think or how to feel about a certain subject or a, a news story. They can gather their own ideas and, uh, you know, hold it up against the word of God and decide whether or not the things that are happening are good or bad or indifferent. Um, but we, we really love World Watch. It starts off our day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like, and then I will hop into the rest of our subjects. The 13th, and this is World Watch. A rescue drama that caught the world's attention is over. An American caver who suffered a medical emergency while at work more than a half a mile underground is safe. It is amazing to be above a complex of rooms. This is where U.S. presidents meet with national security officials to talk through secret operations. They'll huddle here. He and two Russian cosmonauts had planned to do a six-month stint, but when the return capsule sprang a coolant leak, their homecoming had to be pushed back. It's easy to control this bird. Uh, uh, Nick, you realize that we do have matches. This is our brief intermission. And just a little bit of salt to make a paste. Then grab some old newspapers, cut in strips, and dip. Layer by layer, paste them together. Many traditional pinata designs come from Bible stories, such as the Seven Point Star. This has a few meanings, and I'm sure you can figure Okay, so as you can see, there was several different stories going on, and that's what I love about World Watch. It's, uh, there's a variety of things that they share. They share things that are happening in America, things that are happening in other countries. There's things that are happening in government, but they, like I said, they don't give a, they don't give a political slant. They um, share crafts sometimes, or words of the day, or scientific discoveries. It's, it's, it's vast, the things that they share, and my kids love it, and it's a lot of fun. They usually watch watch it while we're eating breakfast, and then from there, we dive into Bible. Um, so with for us, the way that we work through the Bible is we are working through Old Testament and New Testament. So um, we spend a couple days a week in the Old Testament and a couple days in the New. Right now, currently, we're working through Joshua, so we do Joshua about three times a week, and then we work we're currently working through Paul's epistles um, the other two days a week. Um, and then they obviously have their own readings that they're responsible for in their individual time. So um, they're getting a pretty full feast of God's word, which is primary. Um, and obviously it puts everything into the perspective of what we're learning about of what's happening in our current world around us, right? So 
that's um, that's kind of how we start our day. Now, next, I'm gonna go ahead and show you where I house all of the rest of the books that we're doing um, for our family subjects, and then I'll go ahead and place um, a video where I show the rest, or show every individual book that we're reading through and um, the subjects that we're focusing on. So that's next. Okay, so I am sure if you are a homeschooler, you have seen these before. These are the art carts or rolling carts as they're called. Um, you can find them at Michael's, you can find them on Amazon, you can find them at Target, Walmart, pretty much anywhere. So um, the way that I have it, it's not really that organized right now, but back here is the good and the beautiful subjects, uh, history books that we're using for some of the history streams that we're working through right now. And so I have anything, you know, related to our history back here. Um, I have a book on kings and queens of England and Scotland because we're going to be getting into that. Um, I also have, let's see here, this might be tough to get out. This is English Fairy Tales by Simple Studies. If you've never heard of Simple Studies, I highly encourage you to go on Instagram and type in at Simple Studies. Um, it's by Crystal Wiley. She has a number of different Simple Studies that she uses. I think she has one called Creatures of the Night. Um, she has one on America. She has one on farm animals, I believe. This one is on English Fairy Tales and we're spending a good deal of time this year on fairy tales, um, I really felt like compelled to spend some time on different tales, on Aesop's fables, on English fairy tales, on the, the Red Fairy book uh, by Andrew Lang. We have, um, this is an older book. It's the world's best fairy tale. So it's kind of a compilation of multiple different ones. So what we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, we spend some time reading a fairy tale. And um, the way that this um, instructor guide works is she has it laid out, I believe in, gosh, there must be like 36 lessons in here of different fairy tales. So, um, so see here, she has DLR's Greek myths. Um, Lemonade in Winter, Treasure of How I Learned Geography, The Rough-Faced Girl, um, Anatoly and the Cat, Rumpelstiltskin, The Three Sillies. I mean, it. she has a time in here. So we're using this in tandem with, with the Already Studies fairy tale books that we're doing. I also have this amazing new fable book written by a man named Michael James Dowling. I met him at the FPEA um, homeschool at convention and they are modern they're like modern in that he wrote them recently they're frogs rainy day story and other fables but they are so incredible um you cannot underestimate them i will actually probably do an, another video where i talk about this and why it's so powerful especially in the times that we're living in where people are trying to um, change the meaning of truth to fit their um, false reality and um, he just I love it because he he uses these cute little animal stories which is you know how fables are used um, to tell truth and really make you think so um, that's what we use on Tuesdays and Thursdays so that's you know in the top here I also have wonderful ancient psalms um, it's the same company that makes, um, it's called the Ology. Um, they make that one. And then there's another one about the different women in the Bible. Um, and we really enjoy it. So we read like about a psalm a day. We're also working through um, the Tuttle Twins, Logical Fallacies. This has been incredible. I have, like I said, a 12-year-old, or almost 12-year-old, a 14-year-old and two 16-year-olds. And all four of them, collectively are understanding the concepts in this book. It's great for the day and age that we're living in. Um, 
debate is an important thing to be able to do in general, but especially now more than ever. Um, they're really enjoying it though. So that has been a great add to our morning time. Um, let's see, where else? Uh, Publicola, this is a Plutarch. We haven't gotten into this this year. We do plan to do three different Plutarch um, stories this year. But, um, so we have Aesop's Fables, The Fall of the Year, um, Our Island Story by H.A. Marshall, which we're working through. Um, this is the children's Plutarch, which we'll get into when we um, work through Plutarch this year. Um, I also have Poetry Memorization by Andrew Putawa. Let's see if I can show you here. Uh, this is awesome. One of the things that I really wanted to focus on this year was memory. One of the things that I really wanted to focus on this year was memorization. I just felt like uh, we weren't spending enough time on it. We do recitation, but I don't know that we were getting as much out of it as I wanted us to. So I decided to go ahead and invest in this program and it has been so wonderful. I can't say enough good things about it. It's just, it's fantastic. Um, you order the program and then you can download the audio files and you just do one, we've been doing just one poem, one new poem every single week. And then you review all the poems that you've done in the past weeks and then add a new one every week. And you would be surprised how much your kids will learn. It is, it's amazing. It's remarkable. I am, I just think it's so special. And you know, we've been trying throughout the year because the, the Good and the Beautiful has you try to memorize poetry in um, the language arts programs. It's something that we've been trying to do, but doing it as a group, for some reason, we can stick with things like this better as a group. Um, and we're doing the same thing with Latin. Um, we're doing it as a family and it keeps us on track because we do it every single morning. The other thing that we're doing as a family is the, um, the health and human mind study from The Good and the Beautiful. Let me see if I can find the actual course book. Yeah, it's, so this is for ages, it's for three through eight is what it says. However, this is why I love homeschooling, because if there's information that you want your kids to have, you get to give it to them if you think that it's beneficial. And I do. I think that these, these topics are very beneficial. Um, you have um, human mind and nervous system, the brain, eyes and vision, ears and hearing, mouth and taste, smell and the nose, the brainstem, memory and emotions, social health, emotional health, um, connecting with nature and healthy habits. I mean, who wouldn't want their kids to know all of those things? Um, and obviously, you know, in your older grades, they're going to be taking psychology. Um, our, my juniors are taking a psychology class and that's actually, um, I talk about that in another video that I do called Intro to Psychology with the Seven Sisters. You can check that out if you're interested. And so this just kind of goes along with it. It's just, it's just more of what they're already learning and it's just reinforcing all of those things. So, okay, I'm gonna show you just a couple more things and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay, so for the last portion of this video, I just wanna share some of the other things that are not housed in that cart. Um, and kind of go through some of these extra books that I have over here on the table. Um, one of the things that I mentioned is that we are working through history together, obviously, as a family. It's a family subject. Um, so we usually do a study of, we work through American history, and then we also work through British history, and then I try to do one other stream along with that. So. Right now we're working through the French Revolution um, and studying the history of France. In France right now is, it's called um, The History of France by H.G. Oh, I don't have his name. I forget his last name. I'll try to link it in the description box. I have to print it out because I'm printing it from a website. 
Um, and this website, I'm actually going to be doing a different video about because it's a place where I'm getting all of these wonderful, beautiful resources. I can't even tell you enough how much I love this website. It's called aWelleducatedheart.com. I use it for fine art. I use it for history. I use it for stories. I use it for poetry. I, I mean, there are so many beautiful things on this website and I will be sharing that in videos to come. But that is where I got this book about the history of France. It's a, it's a well-known author. I just can't remember his name right now, but um, I was having a hard time finding this book on online that was for cheap. You know, it was, you know, I didn't want to spend $50 on it. And I went to Well Educated Heart and I downloaded it for free. She has all these PDFs available. So um, anyways, that's that. Um, with this book, we are also reading um, The Song in the Streets by Cornelia Spencer, and it's a brief history of the French Revolution. Um, I also think I mentioned we are reading through A Tale of Two Cities. We're listening to it on Audible. Um, and I love Charles Dickens. I love his style of writing. Um, but sometimes because of the way that he writes, because he kind of goes backwards and forwards with his um, descriptions and storytelling and the way that he unravels the story, sometimes it can be hard to follow. So I pair it with um, Course Hero on YouTube. If there's a hard chapter, I will just throw that chapter up on YouTube and let my kids listen to the one or two minute um, explanation of it. I love Course Hero. If you ever struggle with books, um, you know, figuring out characters and whatnot, that is a great place to go. I remember when I was reading Wuthering Heights, there was so much confusion with all of the different names in the family. And I actually had to print out a, a family tree just to like gather everything in my mind so that I could understand um, every person involved in the book. But I also used Course Hero sometimes when I was just like, huh, what's going on? <laughs> so we use that and we also use the Us Born Complete Dickens because this is more of like an adapted version of all of the different uh, Dickens novels. This is a beautiful book because every single story starts with um, a character page where they show all of the different characters in the novel. Uh, let me see if I can show you. So for instance, see here, this one's Oliver Twist. And as you can see, it shows a little chart of all of the different characters. So I usually print this out. I actually have one on my board right now for um, Tale of Two Cities that I printed out for my kids so that they can reference it when they're listening to the audiobook. But also what I do is at some point in the, you know, in the, in the novel that we're reading, I will read a couple of pages out of the adaptation, um, the adapted version and catch them up to speed if they're missing anything, if they're losing anything, or if they have any gaps, it will just kind of bring it all together for them. So um, right now, I think we're in book two, chapter seven, or something like that. So I read them about five pages out of A Tale of Two Cities from this book to just kind of catch them up to speed in case they forgot something or, you know, cause you want them to enjoy the book. You want them to understand it. You want them to pull something out of it that they, you know, didn't before you don't you don't want everything to be lost on them and especially for my sixth grader you know um my 11th graders can follow pretty well um and my ninth grader sometimes you know she's kind of like huh what's he saying <laughs> so this is a great way to kind of catch them up um the other thing that we're going through i think i mentioned it in another video but we are doing family subjects where um we're going through the iliad the odyssey and the aeneid together but the boys and girls versions. I have my juniors doing the actual um, Homer's version of the Iliad and the Odyssey. And then I have um, Virgil's Aeneid that they're gonna go through in the new year. And then I hope, <laughs> hope to get my juniors in uh, to Dante's Divine Comedy by spring. But if we can't, we'll just, we'll do that next year if we can't get into it by then. I'm, I would rather them spend time really digesting the books and getting the most out of them rather than just like trying to rush and speed them past it and then they don't even remember it and they don't receive any value from it so but as a family we're going through the the children's versions of these um 
again, because it's gonna pull together any gaps that they might have. Um, and also it just familiarizes my younger ones, my ninth grader and my sixth grader with it before they have to read Homer's version um, or Virgil's version. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this version, which is Alfred J. Church. I have this version for the Iliad and I also have Alfred J. Church for uh, the Aeneid. And then for the Odyssey, I'm gonna grab it. For the Odyssey, I have this version, version, which is, I believe it's Usborne. Yeah, this is the Usborne version, so we'll get to that. Um, also, along with that, we are reading through DLR's Greek myths as a family because I think that it brings everything together. It's a perfect time to bring in the myths. We've read some of them before in years past when we did a study of ancient Greece, but they were much younger, and so this is their second pass through. Um, and it just kind of helps with the Iliad and the Odyssey and kind of the understanding of where some of these characters came from and the ideas behind it. And um, so those are our family subjects. And the way that we work it is we do history every single day. We do Bible every single day. We do World Watch every single day. Um, we do fairy tales and fables on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we do... Um, like a fun read aloud every day. We're working through either, every other day, we kind of switch back and forth. We're, we're working through the Penderwicks series. This is our, this is the second one in the series um, that we're working through. We're almost done with this one. So about every other day we read the Penderwicks and about every other day we, we're finishing up Princess and the Goblin. We had started Princess and the Goblin last year um, and then got sidetracked by a couple of other more pressing read-alouds that we needed to get through that had to do with whatever historical um, timeline we were in at the time. Um, and then we incorporate our apologetics on an everyday basis, rotating between the logic book um, and also the answers books by Ken Ham. This one we're working through right now, it's very meaty. Um, it takes time. You have to be patient with it. You don't wanna rush through because the information is important and you don't want it to escape them and so sometimes you'll need to stop and explain or maybe read something over again um, it's just really important to take your time with it um, i also have the smaller answers books that we're still finishing up i think we're in book six um, there's about eight of those little ones that are meant more for like younger kids but we're just gonna we're finishing those um, and then the ywam books um, i think i showed you louis Santorini. we're reading his um the missionary story from him reading his book every single day poetry memorization is every day and latin is every day and i would say our morning time takes about an hour and 40 minutes um oh and we also do an art study once a week we study a piece of art for some people that might seem like a long time especially considering we have high schoolers but the time just flies i mean we we so enjoy the time together as a family. My high schoolers, they love it. They still love sitting around the table um, and being together as a family and sharing in all of these different books and learning together. And, you know, I cannot stress enough how important it is to let the Holy Spirit lead you because when he leads you in your time with your children in the curriculums that you're choosing for your children, in the books that you're choosing, in the amount of time you spend on each subject. If you're truly seeking the Holy Spirit, you will know how much to do. You will know how much not to do. You will know um, what, what you need to like back off from or what you need to press into, lean into. Um, it, I cannot explain how many times as on a daily basis I am just in awe of like, wow, this pulled together with this and this made sense with this and this hit my heart here and it it met one of my kids here and um, all of these aha, aha moments of them going, oh my gosh, what about that? I heard that about that in this book and that makes sense because it reminds me of this book or that art piece or that country that we studied or that historical um, event that took place or that war, or look, at the, look at the commonality of you know, human history of this leader and that leader and it, you know, nothing is new under the sun. And I don't know, it's just, it's amazing.
to really watch your kids draw these conclusions, but also as a mom to just be constantly humbled by the fact that I am not the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. He is leading every single thing that we do. He is showing us the gospel message in everything that we're learning about. It, about. He's showing us the gospel message uh, in our history, in our studies of different wars and our need for a savior, not for some man to save us. He's showing us the gospel message in fairy tales. I mean, it is in, in family relationships, in, in all the dyna dynamics that we're reading about in, in the different um, read-alouds that we're reading. It's just, it's phenomenal. Um, and I cannot stress enough how important it is to really seek God about every single thing you do. Do not, um, do not overthink it. Let the Lord lead you and then make decisions and pray about it, you know, and, and we pray every single day before we start, Lord, lead us, show us what we need to focus on, show us what we don't need to focus on. And he will, I promise you, um, we're in our sixth year of homeschooling. And I can say without a doubt, it has, it's not about me. It is not about me. It is about me surrendering to the teaching of the Holy Spirit. It is about me humbling myself and coming under the authority of God and realizing that he's entrusted me with these children, but that I have to hear from him before I speak to them. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much all I have to share for today with the, um, the group subjects. I hope that some of these choices that I've shown you have helped um, you to maybe think of something that you want to add in. Um, like I said, we just, we pray and we do our best and God does everything. Um, one more thing I forgot to mention was that our Latin that we're using is Compass Classroom. It's visual Latin. The guy who does it, um, there's 30 videos, I think, no, 30 different lessons, and each lesson has three different days. So every day, or every week, you're doing about three lessons of Latin videos plus worksheets. He's funny, um, so comical. My kids love him. Short little videos, about seven to eight minute videos for each lesson and then worksheets. It's very doable. It's fun to do as a family. And um, it's just a really easy thing to keep on track, especially like I said, in morning time. I've tried it before separately, just trying to do two kids. And I just, I pushed pause a couple years ago and I was trying to only work with two of my kids. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna wait until we can do everybody all at the same time <laughs> and it worked same thing with poetry memorization so some things you just have to pause and wait until it's the right time so but anyways that is it for today i hope that this helped um, and i hope that you have a wonderful week god bless